Hi, uh, my name is Patrick Jordan. I'm the president of the old Fort Mifflin Historical Society, and you are here at Fort Mifflin for the 240th anniversary of the Siege of Fort Mifflin. The fort was built by the British in 1771 to defend the wealthy colonial city of Philadelphia, which is about nine miles north. Built on Mud Island, a small muddy island in the river, and not a very good place to build anything, let alone a military fortification. So John Montressor, the British chief engineer in America, was charged with constructing the fort. He was given a limited budget, and this is a theme that repeats itself throughout uh, the centuries here at Fort Mifflin. He got about two-thirds of the way through and ran out of money. They declined to fund it any, um, provide any additional funds, so he sent a letter back to England saying, as your grant is contracted, so must be your works. So he departed, leaving what we know as the Western Wall unfinished. That was an earthen embankment at this time. By 1775, Benjamin Franklin has convened the Committee of Safety in Philadelphia, um, and they recognize that although it's built on a muddy island, almost drowned at high tide, strategically it's in a great location. The Delaware River is narrow and shallow. You basically have to hang a pretty sharp left to get up to Center City. We're just south of the confluence of the, the Schuylkill River. So strategically, this is a great place to defend Philadelphia. The Americans garrison it. About 250 soldiers initially, including a company of invalids. These are soldiers who are unfit for battle. So these people are charged with trying to uh, improve the fortification. And by 1777, Washington has been defeated in the land campaign in Philadelphia. He loses Phil uh, Brandywine, Paoli, and Germantown. The British are occupying Philadelphia. They call for resupplies and fresh troops coming up north on the Delaware River on 250 vessels of war and transport. This is the mightiest navy of the 18th century world. Washington tells the garrison here to hold to the last extremity. Well, in late uh, 1777, when the British took over Philadelphia, they tried to resupply themselves by coming up the Delaware River here. And these two forts stood in the way. One was here at Fort Mifflin, the other across the river at Fort Mercer. So against all uh, hopes and dreams, the American garrison holds out for five long weeks of siege, culminating in a six-day bombardment. Beginning on November 10, 1777, the British log up to a thousand cannonballs an hour raining down inside the little fort. They also had many more cannons than we did. We only had a few cannons. They had hundreds of cannons. It was the uh, largest artillery bombardment in North America up to that time. It had cannon, uh, cannon emplacements on um, Carpenter's Island bombarding it and uh, British ships coming up and down bombarding it. They heard gunfire all the way out to Reading, Pennsylvania. Joseph Plum Martin that wrote a story about it said that the, this, this uh, fort looked like a plowed field from all the cannonballs coming in, the bombs. Between Fort Mifflin on Mud Island and Fort Mercer in New Jersey laid a series of underwater obstacles called chevaux de frise. They are 20 to 30 foot timbers topped with an iron spike sunk in a box of rocks. These are designed to impale a northbound vessel. Remember the British have giant ships. They sit low in the water. They would impale a northbound vessel, not necessarily sink it, but hold it stationary long enough that it could be fired upon. <laughs> well, they didn't like, well keep in mind, well. you have to understand so the Brits, and they do the lines, they never actually sh to aim at anybody. They, they would basically point the gun in the direction and avert their eyes when they pull the trigger because it was ungentlemanly to actually t shoot, aim at somebody and shoot them. We didn't look at it that way. I mean, our job was we aimed. <laughs> Or yeah. just one shot, we, one kill, type of thing. in a way, in a yeah. sense. Well, they were more gentlemen-like, as he said. They they found it to be, uh, in some cases, God's will. Wherever that bullet goes. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. Mother Nature provided them with two weeks of flooding rains, and they were able to sail two vessels, the Vigilant and the Fury, up the back channel, so close that there are accounts of Marines climbing the riggings to throw hand grenades inside the fort. So they continue to defend the fort and Philadelphia during a five-week siege culminating in a six-day bombardment, the greatest of the American Revolution. The Americans held out far longer than 
anyone ever anticipated, including the British. And after the battle was concluded, British officer noted it was the costliest weeks of the war. Up to a thousand cannonballs an hour rained down on the fort between November 10th and 15th, 1777. At the end of the day on November 15th, the Americans are out of ammunition, they're out of black powder, and they evacuate the fort. They leave a detail of 40 young soldiers behind who spiked the last 10 working cannon, set fire to what the British had not already destroyed, and then they too evacuated. But they left the fort flag flying, so the fort was defeated. In fact, it was completely destroyed, but it never surrendered. That spirit of perseverance continues to this day. We still battle the elements here on Mud Island. We still have inadequate funding, but we keep the story alive. Here at Fort Mifflin is a very important battle. It held off the British uh, 240 years ago uh, to, to make sure Washington's troops reached Valley Forge. So come out to Fort Mifflin.